focus on your difficulty. The more you focus on your difficulty, your hardship, or even your pain when you're suffering, the more you focus on it, what happens? The bigger it gets. Well, I've, you know, I've, I've been going through this, and I've been going through that. And if your friends listen to you and say, oh, I'm so sorry, I feel so sorry for you, the more pity they give you, the bigger it gets, and the bigger it gets, the more you doubt God. And so the issue is focus. And I think, when I think of focus, I think of many instances in the Bible, but one of the primary ones is Daniel in the lion's den. And so uh, the Bible says he slept with the lions all night. If he'd have been focused on lions, he wouldn't have been sleeping. He'd have been <laughs> over in the corner somewhere, <laughs> all crouching down, hoping that they wouldn't see him or something. <laughs> and it brings me back to one of my most favorite illustrations when God just did something for me in one of the most difficult times of my life. It probably was one of the, up to the very top. And uh, this lady came to see me, and she said, uh, I want you to have lunch with me, and then I want to take you up to my apartment and show you something. Well, she was about 70-something, and I was 30-something, so I felt pretty safe. <laughs> and so, so uh, uh, we ate lunch, and I, I went to see her, and I was going through a very difficult time at church. They were doing their best trying to get rid of me. And uh, so she, uh, we walked in. She said, now, don't sit down. I want to show you something. Walked over and showed me this picture of Daniel in the lion's den. And she said, now, son, uh, I want you to tell me what you see. So I said, well, and I can still remember looking at that picture. I see this line over here looking up and this one looking down and see the bones. And so I thought of everything this little lady could possibly have thought about. And I said, she said, well, do you see anything else? I said, no. She said, if you'll notice. And, and the picture had all these lines and Daniel had his hands behind him. He's looking at this ray of light. She said, what I want you to see is Daniel doesn't have his eyes on the lions, but on God. It was like God hugged me that day. Because from that moment on, all of my fears disappeared and all of my uncertainties and uh, a lot of other things probably disappeared because she got my focus right. When you focus on the trouble and the heartache and the burden and the pain, it gets bigger, and we feel less confident, less significant, and overwhelmed. Because remember this, Daniel was looking at omnipotence who created the lions. He could shut the lion's mouth. He could have killed every one of them in a second. He just let them hang around while Daniel went to sleep that night. And before he probably went to sleep, and when he woke up, he went over and looked up and just reminding of God that he was where he was because he had obeyed God and God delivered him. God always operates on the basis of principles, not on the basis of feelings and how we feel, and so on principles. For example, the simplest one is we reap what we sow more than we sow later than we sow. God always operates. He doesn't ever change that. And so, uh, for example, one of those principles is obey God, leave all the consequences to Him. That means I'm going to do what He says, I'm going to let Him take care of the consequences. God always acts. For example, He says one of those principles is that God acts in behalf of those who wait for Him. And so, if I'm going to act on the basis of principle, then I know I'm going to be heading in the right direction, doing the right thing, because God operates on principles. And that's the reason you and I can learn how to relate to Him, because if I don't understand His ways, then I'm going to say, God, what are you up to? Well, He's just up to doing and being who He says He is. And so, you could come up with most any problem, and I believe it would give me a little time, and I could come up with a principle to say, if you'll obey this principle, watch what happens. Because God wants us to obey Him. Listen, leave the consequences to Him. Let me ask you a question. Is there any consequence of your obedience God can't handle? Right? None. He can handle every one of them. Well, if I obey Him and leave the consequences to Him, here's what happens. I'm going to be able to have peace and a sense of joy and confidence and assurance. It doesn't make any difference what's going on because He's in control, and if I'm obeying Him, He's already taken care of it. Because, listen, the only thing that can happen in your life is what God allows. 
If you're a child of God, what He allows, He allows for a reason. I may not like it, and there have been lots of times I've told him I didn't like it. And you know what he said? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> he just let me hammer away with it and, and deal with it until I finally said, God, I know you're right. I don't like this. I know you're right because that's what your Word says. And even though I don't like it, I want you to have your way no matter what. When you're living with guilt in your life, or you're living with sin in your life, you're going to have a very difficult time trusting God because sin short-circuits the power of God in a person's life. 